We, we have Andy Barnetson back up again to talk about um, um, the, the work that the CPI are doing um, with regard to Beyond the Box and other uh, promotional activity. But I'm going to throw a little bit of a curveball in, and he's going to hate me for this. He might just like to mention um, what the CPI have done with regard to um, talking to the government about energy, if he does know anything about that. Because I, do un I, I believe that they, 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 they had quite a voice and have been quite influential with our with with Bayes and with government. So, uh, Andy, thank you. Well, Tim, I'm delighted to say that we're on the same page, and expecting that question, I've actually got some slides. Oh, really? for you. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, nice to be back. Um, two for the price of one. Either you or I are benefiting greatly. I'm not sure who it is. Um, the Beyond the Box programme, as you've heard from me before, uh, if, if, you, if not here, uh, I'll explain in more, more detail, it's promotion of the industry. So hopefully a, a bit more of an update uh, and uh, hopefully an upbeat compared to my, my pitch before coffee. Um, other CPI activity, uh, I wasn't sure quite what was intended by that in my, 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 my presentation title, so I'm going to cover energy and I'm going to cover some statistics as well. So. Um, I'm not here to comment on the market, but I would echo everything that Neil's just said. But let's start with the good news. Um, beyond the box, four or five years ago, we started with this campaign, and the decision of our corrugated council, my board of directors effectively, uh, with, I think, Ken at the time in involved, uh, the decision was, let's change our approach. Previously, we'd been going out to the, the trade customer in the trade media, saying you should be buying corrugated compared to other materials, isn't it good? And we were getting a sort of, yeah, well, we know it all already, though. Don't, don't bother talking to us. And, and Corrugated Council said, let's change our approach and let's go out to the consumer. If we can win over the hearts and minds of the consumer, then they'll put pressure from the other side onto the big brands. And this proved to be perfect timing because it was around the same time that uh, Blue Planet came out with all the plastics in the ocean. So our timing was very good. And we've had several years of extremely good coverage. Uh, as you can see here, we've averaged a reach in the hundreds of millions each year. Now, it's a difficult thing to judge. What's it really mean? Well, I don't actually care whether it's 300 million or, or 200 million or whatever. If we've got just 1% of 1% of that, then we're reaching an audience that we would not have reached otherwise. So you'll see, uh, particularly in the last week, we've done quite well this year, uh, and we've got some, some record-breaking numbers. This year, at the request of the industry, we have focused specifically on recycling. Until this year, it was, isn't corrugated cardboard good? Well, cardboard, we don't use the word corrugated to the public. Nobody knows what corrugated is. 60 million people out there talk about cardboard. So isn't cardboard good has been our message. And the task, the, the challenge the, to the agency is let's make it sound sexy. And that's <laughs> our, an uphill battle. But they've done very well in finding some ways at least to get some interest. This year, because of the e-commerce thing, through last year, because there's more cor corrugated cardboard in the home domestic environment, because it's then more difficult to, to get that back into the recycling stream, our message to consumers has been keep recycling. So this year, we've followed three quarters of do more recycling, please. And what our agency has told us is that there are three main barriers to recycling. The first one is bad habits, just remembering to recycle. The second is the perception that recycling is dirty and, we, we, and messy and we don't want it. And then the third is about the confusion around what you can and can't recycle. So we've had three quarters of activity specifically targeting each of these barriers. And uh, we'll pick up the, the, the new quarter four when I, when I come to it. Um, quarter one, we engage with Dr. Kieran, the picture you can see behind me. Dr. Kieran is a, a famous online psychologist. She does a lot of work on social media, particularly on TikTok. Don't ask me, I've no idea. Um, <laughs> But we looked at this and we got the psychologists thinking on how we form habits, how we form bad habits, and, and what we should do. We tied that in with our press, re uh, pr press release, our, our research, and so on. And I did a radio day back in March to 11 radio stations and went out to an audience of about 750,000. Radio days are a weird thing. You end up saying the same thing to, to different journalists over and over again, but it gets you out to a very wide audience. So that's 750,000 people, hopefully, who heard me back in March. And, um, and for the subject, as some of you know, uh, I was also invited to speak to uh, the Radio 4 Today Show 
at some point over the summer. Uh, we got 45 minutes notice. Uh, our press office uh, got a call from BBC. With the BBC, um, could someone speak to Evan Davis in 45 minutes about recycling of cardboard? I guess he drew the short straw. Uh, but uh, it's, it's an interesting experience. Um, so TikTok as well. We've got Dr. Kieran to do some TikTok videos, and I understand that this, uh, the nature of TikTok is that it can go big. It, it, when TikTok takes off, it can really be big. So something may yet still come of that. New experience for us. That was quarter one, the bad habits. Quarter two, focusing on the waste of space, we engaged with a series of social media influencers, the, the, the micro-influencers who have 5, 10, 15,000 followers, 10 of those. And then we engaged with Kate Watson-Smith at the top, who's online, she's mad about the house, a very high-profile campaigner for things to be done in an environmentally appropriate way. So we engaged with them, lots of posts. I think last time I spoke to you, I showed some, some clips. These are just snapshots of some of the Instagram footage and she also posted to her followers. So quarter two, waste of space, total reach in that quarter to 675,000. Now social media, you can be reasonably sure how many people have, have seen your posts, you can measure engagement, that sort of thing. So we don't need very high numbers if we know that we're actually getting through. Quarter three, now this is the big one. This is just, well, for obvious reasons, just come to its close. Quarter three, we looked at the confusion we did some more research on, on people's opinions on recycling. Do you know what you can recycle? Do you get confused when you're, you're moving here and there? We've linked it into students going to university. Uh, obviously, it's very topical. And when I put these slides together last week, we'd gone out to a potential reach in the media of 306 million. Since uh, Thursday or Friday, whenever I, put the, whenever I put these slides together, that's up to 320 million. So uh, just one snapshot there, that's the Sun online. Last week we were in the Mirror and the independent uh, print media. We were on about uh, 12 or 15 local newspapers as well as a range of national papers, including uh, I think the Metro, so a list, a very long list. So we got out there, and again, so the agency's telling us we had a potential reach of 319 or 20 million. That's obviously several times the population of the country. You have to think about what it means. Did people really see it more than once, or are we really going out to a population beyond the UK? It sort of doesn't matter. The point is we got out to a very wide range of people, potentially, and again, if it's just 1% of 1% of that, it's good numbers of people that we would not have reached otherwise. Um, quarter four, I come back to the slides you saw before coffee. Uh, decision of the industry was we should put aside the plans for quarter four. It was going to be about who's the greenest town in the, in the country, finding a, a recycling champion, something like that. And we decided, let's put that aside. Let's focus on this reuse thing, because I think if it goes wrong for us, the reusables is the biggest challenge the industry's faced. Um, I'm interested by what, by what Neil told us just now, that paper packaging is reusable, good to hear. Um, that's the sort of message that we need to, uh, to put out. So quarter four activity, starting basically now, is going to be picking up on everything I showed you before coffee about uh, FEFCO. We're not saying that reusable is always bad. We're not saying recyclable is always good. But we are saying that reusable is not always the best option. <coughs> Um, moving on from that and back to the, the main Beyond the Box campaign at the moment, we've done a lot on social media. Obviously, it's the way to go. When we set up five years ago, social media was there, but the priority was get into the national media, get onto the radio, do sculptures, this sort of thing. But now, for obvious reasons, social media is very much the thing. These are the sort of posts we've put up. We've got our own Instagram channel, we've got our own Facebook page, and you can see the numbers against a monthly KPI of 65,000, we're reaching, on average, 250,000. That's 250,000 people we're reaching on social media every month. So that's good numbers. And again, not everyone sees it. You can see the engagement rate, 5.5%, which I'm reliably informed is actually quite a good engagement rate if you think back to the days of sending out mailings. If you put something in the post, how many of them actually come back to you? You're talking in the low percentages. I gather it's the same for social media. And 5.5% engagement, actually pretty good. As we move into quarter four, these are some of the assets that we will be putting out. These are all the messages straight out of the, the FEFCO research, and, and there particularly you can see climate change, the corrugated option is 28% less impact. So we're starting now to, to move on from telling the consumer that cardboard is better than plastics, it's a nicer material. We're saying, well, don't assume that reusable is the right way to go either. 
Uh, a couple of the animations in the social media, I thought I'd throw these in. This one went out over the summer. Little things like that that grab people's attention. And then one that we put out more recently. I used to play Space Invaders as a kid. My fault. <laughs> And of course, these things just grab your attention on social media, and then you finish beyond the box. Oh, that's all. What's that all about? Oh, well, just just follow the link and, and find out, and get them through to the website where we can bore them with the uh, the details. Um, it's not just about social media. Uh, some of you may possibly have seen this uh, about a month ago. I was in the grocer. Uh, Tesco's had a trial of some reusable packaging, and it came to a close. And the agency said, "Well, here's a good chance." to start talking about whether reusable is the best option. So that text is me basically saying, well, no, it's not always the best option. <laughs> I was in a meeting with Tesco the day this went out, and uh, their packaging team weren't entirely happy with me. But there you go, that's, that's the way it runs. So this is us starting to go out saying reusable is not always the best option. Consider recyclable corrugated. We've got a really good record, all the messages that you know very well. Um, moving on from the beyond the box, uh, the other CPI activity. This actually chimes very well with what Neil's just said to you and here's the slide Tim on energy there's a lot of words there and appreciate you may not be, have time to read them all now but the slides will be available to you basically as I understand it and I've taken this from my colleagues I'm not the expert here as I understand it the uh, government is saying that we expect energy prices to be at a certain point and if you have to pay above a certain threshold then we will top up until you get to another threshold at which case you're on your own so um, we all need to study this in more detail. There is no web link there, but I can provide something that someone in the, uh, the SBA team will, will get out to people. Um, basically, you're going to have cover for everything above a certain level, but then if it does go higher than another level, uh, and you may see the numbers here, I, I haven't studied it closely, uh, if you go above another certain level, then you're back on your own again. So uh, some real help. They're talking about this costing the country £60 billion. Pounds over the summer. It's only six months and £60 billion for this support, so uh, we'll all end up paying for it at some point, but in the short term I think very welcome. And the other thing I wanted to mention <coughs> also follows on neatly from what Neil showed us a moment ago. In CPI we track the, uh, the production across the industry. And what you can see here is four years worth, month by month. And we normally track over three years, but of course as we went through 2020, Two, we were then going back in three years to 2020 when lockdown started and the question became, well, where were we before? So now you can see where we were before. The orange line at the bottom is 2022. And you can see how for all recent months it's been tracking below all previous years. We know last year was a bumper year. We know where we are compared to last year, but where are we compared to previous years? 2019 is the blue year. We've gone up from 2019 to the recent last two years, but we're now tracking below 2019 figures. So take out uh, all of lockdown, take out of the, the bounce of last year, and we're lower than we were. That's total industry as we understand it. Don't take those figures necessarily as total industry because it may be a population, a subset of total industry, but it is representative of total industry. This is representative of sheet feeding. Uh, a moment ago I showed you down 9%. Very pleased. That chimes neatly with exactly what Neil told us. Total industry we understand to be down 9% compared to last year for the end to the end of August. Sheet feeding, you can see the number yourself, down 18%. That's our understanding of the sheet feeding market, same period uh, to end of August compared to same period previous year. There are all sorts of reasons why that might happen. I'm not here to talk about the market. You'll know some of these reasons better than me, but uh, clearly it's not... Uh, good times. And that brings me to a second conclusion. Thank you, Tim. So back to that question a year ago, paradigm shift or blip? I think we know the answer, don't we? It was a blip last year, looking at those figures. But we're still going to remain flat in this room. OK, very good. Okay, uh, just to follow on from Andrew, what Andrew said, they're doing an awful lot of hard work on promoting corrugated to the, to the wider world. Do bear in mind that 10% of your subscriptions 
go direct to the CPI promotional committee. So you are invested in that activity. Okay, every year 10% of our whole subscription income goes to the CPI's promotional committee to help them fund that work. So, um, you know, um, we are invested in that. And if I can just, just add, uh, thank you for the reminder, Tim. Very grateful for that support. It does make a difference. I have to say, numerically, it's, it's, it's only a small part of the total, but it is a very welcome part. And I don't think I answered your question, Tim. You actually asked me not what is government doing, but what are we doing about it? And the answer to that is we're in very regular contact. I've got a colleague employed full-time, some of you may possibly know Steve Freeman, he's employed full-time and right now is working extremely hard to engage with government departments to understand what they're doing. I've been briefing to him, it's moving so fast I can't keep up, but we are doing great. Fantastic. Another example of CPI and SPA working well together, so thank you.